black thing go from left to right, and I thought, I'm going to die out here. No one's ever going to know. I couldn't believe what my eyeballs were showing me. I'll, I'll never forget how evil the eyes were. It was horrible. I mean, I've never seen nothing that evil. It ran towards me at a, at a rate that I, I, I can't even explain. Turned and stared at me. And this look of, I just want to kill you. I want to say it was human, but it wasn't. He was, he, was, he was yelling at me to grab a gun, grab a gun. I was like, for what? He said, just grab a gun. And there's footprints all the way to the door of my house. It had went inside my garage all the way to the door. 911, what are you reporting? Jesus Christ, you better... Sir? Sure. See ya. Hello? Get somebody out here. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about six foot nine, I don't know. Do you see him now, sir? Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh-oh. You're listening to Sasquatch Chronicles. Check us out online at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you've had an encounter, email me. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you. Going to be speaking to uh, Pam Purple Rose. And most of you know her from the site. She's always in the forums posting cool stuff. Uh, she had a dogman encounter. I want to say it was like episode 33, uh, somewhere right around there, uh, where she came on the show, talked about a dogman encounter she had many years ago. And I received a phone call from her, and she had seen these strange lights in the sky, these orbs flying around. And it was just interesting. When I saw her video, it was just a very, very interesting encounter story. So I wanted to invite her back onto the show. I know it's not necessarily Bigfoot related, but uh, I really wanted to share this with you guys. Now, most of you have seen the video up on the blog that she took that night. Uh, Very interesting stuff. And wait till you hear what she says happened that night. Uh, You're going to want to hang tight for this one. Uh, I'll also be welcoming Jack to the show. Jack is a Native American uh, from the Navajo Reservation. And to explain Jack's property, he lives in between, he kind of lives in this little valley, in between these two mountains. And the first time he actually heard about one of these creatures was through his father-in-law. Uh, was telling him not to go in certain areas and, and stay away from certain areas. And wouldn't really go into the warning. He would just tell Jack to stay out of these areas. And Jack's norm- Jack's from the city He's returned to the reservation, and he's kind of living out in the country now. Uh, But the first time he's actually heard about one of these creatures, it was from these land surveyors uh, that had actually seen the creatures crossing between the two mountains. And it was at somewhat at a distance that he saw this creature. So Jack thought he'd start looking into it, and he was unintentionally feeding these animals. Very interesting account. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that. If you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. And uh, the long show tonight, I want to jump right into it. Uh, Pam, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Oh, I'm happy to be able to do it. Yeah, no, I'm glad that you came on. I remember your dogman encounter was absolutely terrifying. Most people will remember Pam's encounter uh, with the dog man, but you recently had an encounter with something else. And if you would, for the audience, tell us what you were out doing and then, uh, just walk us into what you saw, what you experienced. Okay. Well, I, I live in a rural area of Western Oregon <clears throat> at the foot of the Cascade mountains. And so going into town is, a, is approximately 20 miles. Uh, and then coming back is 20 miles and it's, it's a wooded, uh, it's coming through the forest along the Willamette River, some, some parts of the Willamette River. It's really dark, and I, I know that road, in, you know, if I was blind, I could probably drive that road. But I was coming back, and it was, um, it was New Year's Eve, December 31st. So um, it, it was dark, but it was only a little bit before 7 p.m., but it was quite dark. And I was coming back, and I came around the bend, our, our little area sits along the Willamette River, which is dammed by the low dam, 
which is Dexter Dam, and then there's a high dam up above it, which which is Lookout Point. So I'm coming around the corner, and I see the lights on the low dam. As I made the slow curve, I also saw a pickup truck that looked like he just pulled up, just barely pulled off the road, and another car that had just barely pulled off the road. And the people were, I slowed way down because I thought maybe they hit a deer or something. They definitely didn't park. They just kind of flung their truck off the road, you know, and they were standing out. So I slowed way, way down, and I noticed they were, both the people in both vehicles were out, and they were pointing up at the sky and talking. And this would be the sky over the lake. And uh, so I slowed way down, and I saw what was going on, and I thought, oh, nobody hit anything. So then I looked up to see what they were looking at. And that's when I saw what I wish I'd never seen. Man, I, it, again, like the dog man thing, I really didn't want to see that. I really never wanted to see a UFO or an orb. <laughs> but that's what I saw. I saw three reddish-orange lights that were probably three-quarters of the way across the lake. And they were, they were, they were extremely distinct lights they were orbs i don't know how else to say it but they they were one was really large one slightly below it was medium size and then there was a tiny little one that was just above the lake and i mean i just i i came to a, i came to almost a halt because i was looking at it and the first thing i thought was Wow, they they put up an electric transmission line across the lake that comes from the dam. You know how they light those up? Yeah. So I sped up because it's all woods now. <laughs> I lost my view. I sped up and I went further. When you go further, you come to a state park. And I thought, man, when I get to state park, I'm going to pull over there because I can't believe they put up a power transmission line like that. But, but just before I left the the area, just before I, I sped up to go to the to go to the state park area, I did see the the very top orb, which to me, if I had to gauge it, I would say it was the size of a Volkswagen bus. I mean, a Volkswagen bug. It just shot off to the left, which would be east, and then the the second one seemed to follow it. And the third one, the little tiny one, was at, just as I was passing the trees, heading east, this little tiny one was just kind of erratic and fuzzy, and it was moving very slowly towards the east. So that's when I decided I would speed up, get down to the state park area, pull in, and get a, light, uh, get a look at this, because it, now I knew it couldn't be a transmission line tower because they just moved on me. So I, I speed down there, I pull in, I turn off my lights, I roll down my windows, and I look for them, and they aren't, they aren't anywhere. They're nowhere. And I'm just looking, but there's a, this whole forest of trees to my right, which would be the west, which I just came from. I'm looking over there to see if they come out from behind the trees. So I, I've been sitting there for about five or six seconds, and I'm looking and looking for them. I can't see them. And I noticed I could hear a do- I could hear dogs barking. All of a sudden, I just started hearing the dogs barking in the in, you know up on the hills and stuff. And that's when I saw this the one big light, the one big orb, came out from behind the trees. It was it was up above, but it just showed up out of the tree line, and it was moving really slowly, and it was heading straight east, right in front of me, from right to left. And then the the uh, medium-sized one came behind it. It was quite a ways behind it, though, but it came out. And they were, it was totally silent. They were very clearly self-lit. They had crisp, desi- defined edges, and they, were n- they never did blink or anything. When they got to about 100 yards past the trees and almost in front of me, in the middle of the lake, when they were almost there, the that big light again shot to the left or the east out of sight and then that that second one that was almost as big as the first one it it did the same thing shot to the left